Good morning, everyone. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord for all his goodness and his mercy and his grace unto us. Pray this morning that the Lord's blessing be upon all that we say and all that we do in this place today, that he can be high and lifted up. Because that's our purpose for being here, is to be with one another in fellowship, be with one another in worship. But more than anything else, we want to lift up the name of Jesus. Right. We want to celebrate Jesus. Because when you begin to think about all that he's done for us, we can never celebrate him enough, can we? Amen. We can never give him enough thanks, and we can never give him enough praise for all of his goodness and all of his mercy that he has for us. Praise the Lord. We want to remember those on our prayer list that uh, we have been praying for. Uh, we have, I have a very special request that uh, I want to ask the church to help pray for the Abbott family. Uh, Sister Winnie Abbott is, was at one time, she was my pastor's wife. And they sent her home a couple of days ago. She's not on the list, but they, they sent her home a couple of days ago and uh, uh, under hospice. And oh, wow. her time is very short. And she is such a precious, sweet lady. She really is. And they pastored the West High Bluff for a number of, for a number of years, back several years ago. They did. They're, they're precious people. So I remember the Abbott family right now when we pray. And we're going to continue to remember all these others that are on our prayer list. I have some, I guess, that are out with sickness this morning. We want to remember them and, uh, and uh, all the other requests that are that are made. Does anyone have a special request this morning you want to make known? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Thank God for the blessing. Yes. Uh, lady, I know she's got cancer. Yes. And she's not going to be
the Lord began to work on the on the situation that was in there. So we want to pray. We want to be a praying people in a praying church to see God do great things. Because we've seen we've seen Brother Lee has a good example of what, how prayer works. There are others good examples we've got of how prayer works, and we know uh, of the power of prayer. Our great God of heaven, we come to you today and we're so thankful. And we're so grateful for your love and your grace and your mercy. And all that you do on our behalf, Lord. And we ask you today, my Lord God, that you would touch and you would move in every situation and every circumstance. Come to Abbott family this morning. Lord God, they've been faithful servants for many years. And for a very difficult time in their life, Lord, that the family needs your strength. They need your help and your support. My Lord God, we know when she draws her last breath in this life, where she's going to draw her first breath in eternal life. My Lord God of heaven, I know she'll be shouting those streets of gold. But my Lord of heaven, for the pain and the heartache that, that the family had to endure, I'm praying, God, that you would move in their behalf and undergird them, Lord. Lift them up, my Lord God, for keys and, 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 and for, for, for Tony's sister-in-law and, and God of heaven for, for Ben's friend and these of every request, my Lord God, has been made known this morning. We're asking that the miracle working power of our God touch their heart, touch their lives, save the lost, heal the sick. My Lord God, lift up and do whatever things may need to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen.
close your eyes for one second and say, let's get your heart to the Lord because there's been some things that you've been bad about. Maybe it's your self-worth. Maybe it's oppression and depression and a lot of things that's been coming upon you. But some questions been going through your mind and your heart has been heavy. There's a weight on your shoulders that you can't seem to shake off. You may have some regrets from the past. Some mistakes that were made. And they keep haunting you. They keep binding you and holding you down. I feel the presence of the Lord here this morning. And he's here to break the chains that bind you. When we begin to speak the name of Jesus, we begin to declare the name of Jesus, we begin to praise the name of Jesus, those chains will be broken. Those chains will be broken. Oppression has to leave. Depression has to leave. Sorrow has to leave. The things of the past, the guilt, you've already asked the Lord to forgive you of, they're gone. They got to leave. Everything that the enemy is trying to hold you down with, those chains are gone in the name of Jesus. So as we sing this this morning, if you want to keep your eyes closed, that's great. But just lift your heart and lift your hands if you want to. I would encourage you to, to lift your hands toward heaven and just begin to speak the name of Jesus. Sing the name of Jesus. Say the name of Jesus. And let those chains come off. Let those chains be broken. Hallelujah.
every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Because I want to tell you, our God is a great God. Yes, yes amen. amen. And our God is just as great as we allow him to be. Yes. If you want an itty bitty God, he'll be an itty bitty God to you. But if you want a great big God, if you'll just open your arms and open your heart, he's right there to be. Oh, my, my, my words cannot describe just how mighty that our God can be. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've had this on my heart for a few weeks now. And I pray that right now we just put everything to the side and focus on the Lord because the Lord wants to do something in this place yeah. this morning. I've sensed it yes, since we got here and started setting up. In the wee hours of the morning, let's pray to the Lord. <coughs> do something in our service special this morning. Yes, Lord. And it was no coincidence. I don't know how many of you were up at daylight this morning. Hallelujah. But there was a heavy fog that covered Redfield this morning. Yes. Heavy fog. You say, well, what's so important about that? You're fixing to find out. Amen. Believe with all my heart, it was something that the Lord gave me for a sign. That he wants to do something for you this morning. Thank you, Lord. Yes. If you'll just open Hallelujah. up and say, Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Here I am, Lord. Yes, Lord. We all know that water is essential every living part of God's creation. Nothing that lives the living creation of God can exist without water. Water is of such importance that I don't know if you notice it or not, but the Word of God opens speaking of water. Yes. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 6, it talks about a mist or a fog yes. as you would that went up and watered the earth. But then it goes to Genesis chapter 10, or, 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 or I'm sorry, let me get ahead of myself. Then it, the Bible not only begins with water, it closes with water. Yes. Because in Revelation chapter 22, verse 1, it speaks of a river in the presence of God. Yes. See, so water is on the heart of God, it's on the mind of God, and it's no, it's no, it's no coincidence that water is one of the symbols, one of the things that speak to us of the Holy Spirit. And the moving water speaks to us of what? The moving yes. of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes. So we want to keep that in mind this morning. See, the Genesis account of the mist or the fog, that represents, that speaks to us of God's substance. Always more than enough. Thank you. Because there wasn't just a little mist, there was a whole fog, a, a whole mist of water, a cloud of water that would cover the garden. More than enough. Is God ample supply? Yes. But the Revelation account reminds us of the abundance of God. The abundant life that God has for his people and for his church. Yes. Hear me today, child of God. It's not God's will that we live in lack. It's not God's will that we leave that, that we live down, downcast, downtrodden. Beat down, oppressed, depressed, and gloom, doom, and despair hanging over us like a dark cloud. It is his blood, it is his purpose, and it is his will. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. Amen. Yes. He wants us to have the abundant life. Yes, Thank you, Lord. And it's through Christ Jesus that, that we can have that abundant life. Yes. I find it interesting that what started out to be a mist or a vapor, or a fog, turned into a river. In verse 10, 
It comes up on that verse 4. It talks about the fog. In verse 10, that fog, there was a river that flowed through Eden. Now, not only was there a river, that river had a purpose. The purpose of that was to water the garden. In other words, it was the purpose of the river to bring life to God's creation. Amen. It was the purpose of of the water to bring life. How many know that it is the purpose of the Holy Spirit to bring life yes. to God's creation? Yes. Yes. Lord. Without the moving of the Holy Spirit, without the operation yes. of the Holy Spirit, there is no Christian life. Yes. Yes. He comes into our hearts when we ask Him to forgive us of our sins yes. and we accept yes. Him as Lord and yes. Savior. Yes. The Holy Spirit comes in to take up residency in us and He doesn't want to just sit there and become dormant and become stale and stagnant. He wants to be a river. He wants to be flowing through us. Yes. And I'm going to tell you something, my friend, when we allow him to flow through us, just as the water in Eden, the river in Eden, flowed through the river, through the garden, to water the garden, as we allow his spirit to flow through us, yes. he will bring life yes. into us. Hallelujah. Every one of us have witnessed the results of dehydration. Not only have we seen it, we have possibly experienced what it is to become dehydrated. Yes. What do you mean dehydrated? I mean when you begin to lose the moisture from your body. We've all seen how plants and, 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 and all of God's living creation, how they, how they wither away and dry up and die as a lack of water. Yes. Can I ask you a question this morning? Have you ever been thirsty? Yes. I'm talking about not just a little bit of thirsty. I'm talking about where your body was craving yes. moisture. Yes. To where you were craving something, something refreshing, something, something that would satisfy. How many times have we made the mistake that if we get thirsty, we go grab a Coke Zero and chuck a lug in, and it just makes us more thirsty. But we're going to grab a big old cold, cold glass of iced tea and try to drink it, and it just makes us more. Or if you're like me, you go grab your coffee cup and fill it up, take a big old swig of coffee, and it does. And as much as I love the coffee, when I get thirsty, my coffee doesn't do me any good. Amen. Can I tell you something? Whenever I get thirsty, the only thing that quenches my thirst is a big old glass yes. of water. Yes. It don't have to even be ice water. I can take tap water as long as it's wet and as long as it's water. It'll satisfy that craving. Yes. It'll satisfy that yes. thirst. It'll quench that thirst. My friend, let me tell you, we live in a world today where men and women are thirsty. Yes. They're looking for something yes. to quench their thirst. Yes. Oh, I want to tell you something, my friend. Sometimes we make the mistake of trying to substitute our water with other things and we suffer for it, don't we? Yes. We start having kidney problems and other issues and other health related problems. Can I tell you something? The same thing happens with the spirit man. Amen. When we begin to allow other things to get in the way and other things become a substitution for the spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit living and dwelling and flowing yes. through us, we begin to have spiritual problems. Yes. We begin to get spiritually dry. Yes. We begin to get spiritually dehydrated. Yes. And I want to tell you something. What happens to a, to, to a plant if you if, if you start noticing it starts getting a little wilty and it starts getting a little dry looking? If you go out pretty quick and you pour your little water on it, it'll perk right back up, won't it? Yes. yes. But you go out there and you let that thing dry. And you let it dry, and you let it dry, and you just keep ignoring it for a couple of days. After a couple of days, you go out there, you can pour five gallons of water on it, but it ain't going to do you any good because it's dead. That's right. And I'll tell you, when we, when, uh, when, when, when we, the same with the spirit man, my friend, let me tell you, we need a fresh daily infilling and refilling yes. and quenching yes. of the spirit of God yes. as it flows yes. in us and flows through us so that we don't become spiritually dead. Yes. Hello? Yes, amen. Yes. Spiritually dead. Yes. Well, we no longer hear the voice of God and we don't care. Well, we no longer 
problems with God and we don't care. I want to tell you something. I hunger to hear God's voice every day. I hunger to feel God's presence every day. I've experienced a lot of things in this world that I don't care to ever experience again, but I want to tell you something. There's nothing like experiencing the outpouring of God's presence and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost as it starts at the top of my head and runs out the top. The, the toenails of my feet. Yeah. My friend, and I, that's worse. And I'm more addicted to that than anybody could ever be to cocaine. Yes, yeah, that's right. I love yeah. to feel the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I hunger for it. Yes, yeah, amen. And I thirst yeah. for it. Yes. Yeah. And I long for it. Yes, Lord. Then I want to tell you something. I was reminded as I was praying a few days ago. We had it back several years ago. During the Vietnam, at the close of the Vietnam War, when they started bringing all the refugees over to here, we had a couple of young men by the name of Ping, Ping and Singh from Cambodia that come to work this place I was working. And they couldn't even really speak English. The Lutheran Church there in town supported them and sponsored them, and, 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 and the plant manager was a part of the Lutheran Church, and that's how they got in there. And we were real friendly to them. We, you know, we, we tried to embrace them. We were real friendly to them. But, boy, I tell you what, these guys, the first few days they come to work, you would have seen some of the stuff they were eating. Oh. Now, you know, I'm, I, 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 I'm a connoisseur of fine food. I like to try good food. But they didn't bring anything that looked appetizing to me. Oh. They didn't bring anything that I wanted to go over and bump them and say, hey, does that taste good? But we had a couple of brothers that kind of took them under their wing. And a few weeks down the road, they introduced them to peanut butter and jelly. And them two little Cambodian boys about that tall right there, they thought they had died and gone to heaven when they discovered peanut butter. Because all of a sudden, you quit seeing all this other stuff come to lunch that they brought to lunch. And they started bringing big old thick peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to lunch. And you know, I thought about how that is. I wish the, the Lord would just give me yeah. enough of the Holy Ghost that yeah. I have to carry it in a bucket. Yeah. And if I could carry it in a bucket and begin to pour it out on folks and begin to pour it out on folks yeah. and begin to pour it out on yeah. let them know what it is to feel the presence of yeah. God yeah. in their life. Yeah. To let them know what it is to have the power of God in their life. Yeah. To let them know what it is to have the joy of the Lord in their life. To let them know what it is to have a good old-fashioned Holy Ghost yeah. outpouring in them lives. My friend, if I could pour it out of a bucket, I would. Yes, yes. amen. Yes. yes. I think there's some things that need to happen. Because if you never taste it, if you don't know what you're missing. Yes. But once you taste it, yes. once you taste it, yes. you'll never want to go back again. Amen. Amen. You'll amen. never want to go back again. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, Jesus made a statement. He said, if any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. My friend, let me tell you today, this world of thirsty people that are looking for something to satisfy them, that's why we seek Jesus. Yes. That's why we sing about Jesus. That's why we talk about Jesus. That's why we have Cross Point Church where we point people to Jesus. Because I want to tell you something. If they're thirsty, we've got the answer for their thirst. And their answer is Jesus. Yes, amen. Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me yes. and drink. Yes. I want to tell you folks today, we have a lot of folks who want to turn to alcohol. And they want to consume, well, one drink. Or, or, or satisfy. Well, they find one drink don't satisfy, so they take two. And two don't satisfy, so it winds up with ten. And ten don't do the job, so it winds up with fifty. And fifty don't do the job, and the next morning they wake up feeling miserable, and they're still thirsty, and they're still not satisfied, and they're not content. But I'm here to tell you, if they would look at Jesus, my friend, just one drink, oh, just one drink from his fountain will satisfy that thirsty in your soul. When you got folks today that want to turn the drugs, they want to smoke a joint, they want to do a line, they want to pop a pill, they want to 
want to do this. They'll even want to pump that poison into their veins because they're looking for something yeah. to make them feel good. They're looking for something to quench that and satisfy that longing inside of them. But my friend, let me tell you, one joint leads to five. That leads to ten. It still leaves you empty. One line will lead to five. That leads to ten. That still leaves you empty. My friend, no matter how high you get on the things of this world, it'll never satisfy yeah. your soul like being high on Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Been there, done that, wrote the book on it. I can tell you about it. See, that's why a lot of people are, can't stay at one job very long. It's because they're looking for a job or a career to satisfy that longing in them. And they'll bounce from this job to this job to this job to this job. And they'll, well, do they have the Jethro Bodine mentality? I know I'm aging myself right here. But Jethro Bodine mentality was one day Jethro won't be a fry cook. And the next day a brain surgeon. And the next day a government all spy. He just couldn't make his mind up. Well, that's the way some people are. They hear and they hear and they hear because they're trying to find something to satisfy them. Can I tell you, only Jesus yes. will satisfy yes. our soul. Yes. We have folks who want to get, they, 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 they think mere material possessions and material gain will bring them satisfaction. And there's nothing wrong with having a bank account. So don't take what I'm saying, fix and say the wrong way. But I want to tell you that they get a craving. There's something missing inside of them. And if I can just get more money, more money, more money, it'll satisfy me. My friend, let me tell you, more money, more money, more money won't do you any good. I had an uncle that used to throw his chest out and make his brag. I've got my living made. I, he had a few dollars in the bank. I've got my living made. I don't have to work another day in my life if I don't want to. But he walked in the back door of his house one Saturday night. High on mint gin, his heart exploded. And you know what? The money he had in the bank didn't do him a bit of good. Amen. Right. When he stood in the presence of his maker. Yeah, that's right, oh God. Oh God. Hallelujah. Nothing will satisfy that longing in you. Yes. Yes. I'm reminded of the words of Jesus. When he told the woman at the well, and it's speaking in regard to these things that I was just talking about. When he told her to whoever drank of this water, speaking of those things that we try to use as substitutes for the Spirit of Christ living in us. Whoever drinks of this water. It's going to thirst again. Yes. But I love the next words he said. But he said, but if you'll just drink of the water that I give you. Yes. Oh, my, 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 my. Yes. Whoever drinks of this water. Yes. Whoever yes. drinks of this water. Whoever tries to get this job or that job or this possession or that possession. Do this drug or that drug or this drink or that drink or this thing or that thing to satisfy that longing. You're going to find out that longing is still going to be there. But if you'll drink of the cup that I have for you, if you'll drink of the cup that I have, my friend, you'll, satisfy, you'll never thirst again. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, glory. If any man come to me, let him, let him come unto me. Yes. And not just sit there and look, but let him come and let him drink. Yes. <coughs> let him come and drink from the fountain. Yes. Get under the spout where the glory is being poured out. Oh, my friend, let me tell you something. You'll never be glad, sorry that you did. Yes. In John chapter 7, verse 38, he says that if we believe on him, as the scripture has said, that means believe on him as being our Lord, being him our Redeemer, yes. him our Messiah, him being the Son of God, him being our hope, him being our help. Everything that the scripture talks to us about who Jesus is, if we'll receive that, yes. if we'll accept that, if we'll digest that, 
if you have get in that into us, if we believe on him, as the scripture has said, he said, out of his belly, out of our innermost being, out of our in deep down within inside of us, there shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. Just as the mist in Genesis 2 and 6 gave way to the river in Genesis 2 and 10, so it is with the Lord. When that thirsty soul comes to him and takes a drink of his living water, yes. it gives way from a drink of water to a river of water. Yes. Because I want to draw your attention to this one word right here, rivers. Notice how that's plural. It's not singular. It's not one river. Because when you come to Jesus and you begin to believe on him, and you begin to embrace him. Amen. And you begin to allow him in your heart. You begin to drink of his cup. You begin to drink him in and soak him in and let him satisfy. That's what's in you. There's going to come out from deep down what's inside of you. Rivers. Yes. Rivers. More than one. Of living water. Yes. Oh, I love how God works. Because for simple-minded folks like me, he goes on in verse 39 to explain what he was talking about. He said, uh, he said, he spoke of the Spirit, which they would believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. What are you driving at, Pastor? In, in these three verses, Jesus is telling us that all, A-L-L, -L, no one excluded all who come to him if they if they're thirsty and are trying to find something to satisfy them. If they'll come to him, if they'll embrace him, if they'll believe on him, if they'll accept him, if they'll become intoxicated by him, hear me. Yes. Then they'll never thirst again. See, that's why one of the things why the world tells the word tells us not be drunk with wine or any type of strong drink. Don't 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 consume it. Don't don't mess with it. Because when you do, you become under the influence of that. Yes. Right. It begins to control your personality. It begins to control your speech. It begins to control your actions. It begins to control you. You put yourself under subjection to it. But he said, don't, don't mess with that. But be filled with the Spirit. Yes. Let the Spirit of God influence your heart. Yes. Let the Spirit of God flow through you to influence your speech. Let the Spirit of God flow through you to influence your actions. Let the Spirit of God. Oh, I want to tell you something, my friend. We have a choice. We're either going to let the Holy Ghost be our influencer to come under the influence of the Holy Ghost and let him influence our, 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 our speech and our actions and so forth, or we're going to come under the influence of the devil. Amen. Right. And let the devil control our speech and our actions. Amen. It's just that simple. Yes. But I'm going to tell you something. And I'm not talking book knowledge. I'm talking first-hand knowledge. I've been under the influence of the devil. Yes. And I've been under the influence of the spirit. And I'll take the influence of the Spirit yes. in time. Yes, yes. amen. Hello? Yes, amen. I've been under the influence of the devil. Yes. And I've been under the influence of the Spirit. Yes. Hands down, thousand to one, I'll take the influence of the Spirit every yes. time. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let it flow. Yes. Let it flow. Oh, hear me tonight, this morning, church. We need to find the rivers of living water flowing deep from inside of us. Now, we want to better understand this. And I'm trying to get somewhere in a hurry. In Genesis 6, we know it was the mist of the water that was in the garden. We know in Genesis 2 and 10, there was a river that was in the garden. But that mist that gave way to a river, here in verse, verse 10, it is a river, okay? The mist, a river, did what? It gave way 
before we yeah. uh-huh. Hear me. If you knew where I was going, you'd already gonna fix you out. Yes, hallelujah. One river yeah. flowing from the presence of God yeah. is gonna branch off to four distinct rivers. Yeah. Oh, I want to tell you this is where the rivers of living water that Jesus spoke about began to flow from. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, I will tell you. Oh, we look and we see how that these four rivers, each one were given a name. And any time there's something or someone given a name in the Bible, it's not just a coincidence that they were called by a certain name. That certain name had a significance. That certain name had a message. That certain name had a purpose behind it. Sometimes we just need to do our homework and do a little digging to find out what it means. Yes. And we're about to go to go to college this morning. Because see, the first name of the first river was Pison. What does this mean? This name Pison means increase. So when we begin to believe on Jesus, as the scripture has said, and the river, one of the rivers that's going to flow from us is the river of increase. <laughs> this brings of God's abundance in our life. Yes. The overflowing yes. abundance. Yes. Not just a trickly little stream, but the overflow. Yes. Out of its banks, Hallelujah. flowing from within us. Yes. I want to tell you something, my friend. God does not want his people. He does not want his church to be depleted, malnourished, dehydrated of our spiritual resources. But he wants us to be full of his yes. spirit. Amen. He wants to give us the increase yes. of his spirit. He wants to give us the overflowing of his spirit yes. that flows from Jesus yes. with yes. inside of us. See, within this overflowing of the river, we find the character of God. We find the nature of God. We find in here the, 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 the love of Christ. Yes. We find the mercy. We find the grace. Yes. We find all that we need to go through this life. In abundance. Yes. In abundance. Yes. More than enough. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Because of that river that's flowing deep within us. Oh, I love what Janelle said. Or, or, I mean, I'm not Janelle, but I'm looking at one thing, thinking another. I love what Noel said a while ago. When she was talking about how the devil comes at us in the middle of the night and he tries to attack. And he tries to oppress, and he tries to depress, get us down. We're worthless. We're useless. Mm -hmm. Woe is me. Nobody loves me. I've been there, done that. Yes. Hello. Amen. And if I listen to that voice, I could be there in about 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you something. When the devil comes in like a flood trying to destroy you, the Spirit of God will raise yes. up a standard yes. against him and yes. stop him dead yes. in the tracks. Hallelujah. All you got to do is say Jesus. Yes. Yes. All you got to do is say Jesus. Yes. All you got to do is say Jesus. <laughs> and when you say Jesus, all of a sudden, way down from deep inside you, that river is going to start flowing. Yes. That river of abundance is going to start flowing. Yes. That river of plenty is going to start flowing. Let the river flow, church. Yes. Let the river flow. Yes. We need the river to flow. Yes. The second river is Gahan. Gahan means a busting forth, a gushing of water. This speaks of the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes, hallelujah. As it flows through us. Yes. <coughs> Hello? Yes. Remember what I said a while ago about how big and how great is our God, and He's as great as we'll allow Him to be. How powerful is the Holy Spirit? Yes. The Holy Spirit is only as powerful as we allow him to be. Yes. But if we give him full reign, and we give him full control, and we give him full access, he has a mighty power. Yes. Have you ever seen the force of a river? I'm not talking about a little trickling stream of water. I'm talking about water that has current. Yes. When it starts going downstream, anything is just in its way. Yeah. Look out, it's going. 
It'll take trees. It'll take houses. It'll take bridges. It'll take anything that gets in its way. It'll cut channels. It'll cut. It'll cut paths. It'll, because there's a power and there's a yes. force behind it. Yes. My friend, let me tell you something. Now, when the spirit, the, 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 that 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 Gihon spirit of the Holy Ghost began to flow down deep within us, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to take away some of those disappointments. It's going to take away the, the, those that depression. It's going to take away the, that 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 guilt that we have, us the mistakes we made in the past that we've already prayed and asked the Lord to forgive us about, but the devil keeps trying to bring them up. My friend, let me tell you something. If you ask Jesus Christ to forgive you of something, the devil is the only one that remembers it because the Lord doesn't remember it anymore. Yes, amen. Amen. And he keeps trying to bring it up. You need to, that's when you need to speak Jesus. Yes. And you need to let that flood begin to flow through you. You need to let the power of the Spirit of God yes. begin yes. to flow through you. To do a cleansing of your heart. To do a cleansing of your mind. To do a cleansing of your soul. I am clean in the name of Jesus. I am clean in the name of Jesus. Behold, how the former things have washed away. Behold, all things. Are new yes, because I am a child. Yes, of hallelujah. 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 Let the river flow. My friend, let me tell you when we have the power of the, 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 of the river of abundance and we have the force of the river of power, we're going to see things begin to fall by the wayside. As the church, when these two great rivers begin to flow through us, yes. can I tell you what's going to wash out? We're going to see hate begin to wash away. Yes. We're going to see evil begin to wash away. Yes. We're going to see malice wash away, prejudice wash away, yes. bigotry wash away. Yes. All these things that are going on in our culture, in our society right now, where brother hates brother, mama hates daddy, daddy hates sister, daughter, daughter hates brother, and all these things that's going on right now where you can't even turn the news on without there being how many people got shot in Pine Bluff or Little Rock last night. It breaks my heart every morning when I turn the news on. But I want to tell you, church, we have the answer. And the answer is to get a hold of Jesus and let the Holy Ghost flow through us. Let his power flow through us. Let his love flow through us. Let his mercy flow through us. Let his grace, his compassion, let him flow through us with the power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. <coughs> oh. Then the third river is Hedekel. This means swift and darting. This reminds us of an archer that takes a bow and arrow and he shoots the arrow from the bow. You know how fast that arrow, you know, watch an arrow, how fast they move. I mean, just you can't hardly see them. They move so fast. That archer doesn't just lob it up out into space hoping that that arrow hits something. Nowadays, we use little old pins on a, bow, on a compound bow to do it. <clears throat> they used to look down the arrow, pull that arrow back and look down that arrow, put that point on the target, and let her fly. It had a precise path with a power and a speed behind it to hit a target. Yes. What do you mean? I was praying for this. I, uh, I started writing notes as I was praying and started writing things down. I got to write the best. I, I, I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> but I managed to decipher out of that. The Lord said, when this river begins to flow through us, it won't be like a sawed-off shotgun, Terry. <coughs> so when you squeeze the trigger, there's just a big, wide pattern they're just hoping that it hits something, maybe, if we're lucky. Yeah. But it's going to be like a high-powered rifle with a big 5 by 12 scope mounted on top of it that can drive nails at 200 yards and a marksman Hallelujah. that can squeeze the trigger and hit targets. Thank you, Lord. The marksman is the Holy Spirit. Yes. 
He's going to flow from us with a preciseness. Yes. Hear me. With a preciseness. Yes. I hear what I'm saying. For too long, we've been satisfied with the shotgun blast. Yes. Just putting it out there and letting it fly and letting it go. If it hits, it hits. If it don't, it don't. But we need to get a hold of the Lord and say, Lord, let my words, let my deeds, yes. let my actions have a purpose. Yes. See, the Word of God tells us that the Word of the Lord of God is quick and it's powerful when it comes out from us. We need the Word of God coming out of our lips. We need the Word of God coming out of our hands. We need the Word of God coming through us under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost because it has a part. See, God's Word doesn't go forth for nothing. When we preach the Word, we teach the Word, we speak the Word, it has a purpose behind it. It has a meaning behind it. And it will accomplish that that the Lord wants it to accomplish. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, my friend, we need to let the river flow through us. Yes, hallelujah. That brings us to the fourth river. The fourth river is the river Euphrates. Euphrates means fruitful. Oh, my, my, my. When we allow the Holy Spirit of increase to flow through us, and we allow the river of power and might to flow through us, and we allow the river of swiftness and direction to flow and precision to flow through us, it's going to produce the river of fruitfulness that's going to flow through us. Yes. What do you mean? There are some people that we've got on our prayer list that we've been praying for. Sister Sherry, we're going we're gonna to get some phone calls. Hey, guess what happened? That prayer has been answered. we got some folks that have been sick that we've been praying for. Hey, they've gotten healed. we got some folks that have been lost that they need Jesus that we've been praying yes. for. Hey, I got a phone call. They got saved. I got When I was pastoring my first church, I got a phone call about midnight one night from a church clerk. And he said, well, there's no gym. He said, well, I've had to call you a couple times through the night with some bad news, and I figured you might want to know this, so I called you to tell you about this. And I said, okay, what's up? Well, I knew you was probably asleep. Yeah, Jim, I was, I was sleeping. Well, Michael just got saved. That was his God. next to youngest son. Praise God. Michael just got saved. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, really? Man, I got excited, got wide awake, got pumped up about that time, and I've been praying for Michael for a while. Hallelujah. He said, yeah. He said, he, 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 his little wife, Manisa, said she went to the doctor and found out she was pregnant. And come home and told him, and after he got through throwing his little temper tantrum, he said he, Went down and sat on the couch and looked at her. He said, well, you know this means I got to give my heart to the Lord, don't you? Hallelujah. She said, well, no, I didn't know that. He said, well, I made the Lord's promise a long time ago that if I ever have kids, I wasn't just going to give them to daddy to take to church. I was going to raise them myself in the right way. Praise God. And I raised them up in, the, in, 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 in church and be the example that they needed to be. She said, okay. She got up and went to bed. I said, you know what to do about that. He got down on his coffee table and began to pray. See, the wonderful thing about that story is about a month before that, we had a wonderful Sunday night service and his little, his little, his little wife, Anissa, got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And they were living next door to the church at that time. And, and, and we dismissed church, and that little girl, she come running out of, the, out of the church, and she went running in the house, and she was all excited about just getting the Holy Ghost, and as soon as she told him, he come running out of the house, jumped in his truck, floorboarded that truck, and went down the street in front of the church side, way burning rubber. One of the men looked at me, he said, I've been there before, he said, I know what he's feeling right now. He said, but his time is short. Yeah. And I said that about two weeks later when I get the phone call. 
Now he's preaching the gospel. Now he's preaching the gospel. I want to tell you something. When we allow the Spirit of God to flow through us, we're going to see things happen. I'm going to tell you something, church. The devil tries his best to build dams to keep the Spirit from flowing. Yeah. Hear me? Yeah. He'll allow hurts. He'll allow disappointments. He'll allow discouragements. He'll allow bitterness. He'll allow strife. He'll allow envy. He'll allow hate. And all these things that are in his arsenal, he brings in and he tries to place them in our heart in order to build a dam to keep the rivers of God from flowing through us. I should have got a picture of the Hoover Dam put on the screen this morning, but I didn't. Because the Lord let me see that's how big some of the dams are that's holding back his rivers that are wanting to flow through his people. Yes. And the devil just keeps stacking stuff up and stacking lies up and stacking this up and stacking that up. And adding to is like interest in the bank. It just keeps compounding, compounding, compounding to try to stop the flow of God's river from flowing through God's people. But I'm here to tell you this morning, in Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That word power in the Greek is didymus. Didymus is the root word where we get dynamite. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying that we want the rivers of God's rivers to flow through us. We have a power source that's greater than any TNT alive that can break down the dams. It can break down the, not just a layer or two of it, a little, little bit. Of, we can break it down and let the rivers of God begin to flow through us like they are supposed to flow through us. With a gushy, mighty yeah. force, yeah. bringing the abundance of life not only to us but to this world. Bringing the word of God not only to us but to this world. To be fruitful to this world, my Lord God, sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Seeing people saved. Seeing people delivered. Seeing people healed. Seeing people set free from the bondage of sin. Yes, amen. Any man thirst. Yes. Come to him and drink. And I ask the question this morning. Are you thirsty? Yes. Are you thirsty? There was a little woman that Jesus offered her a drink of water one day out of a well that had been there for hundreds of years. But what the water he offered her wasn't from that well. He offered her water of eternal life. Well, her comment to him was, give me this water that I thirst not. And I tell you today, if you're willing to let the rivers of God's Spirit flow through you, there's an abundance headed your way. There's an abundance headed your way. And can I tell you, my friend, it's our choice. Are we going to let the river flow? Are we going to hang on to the hurts? Are we going to hang on to the depression? Are we going to hang on to the anxiety? Are we going to hang on to this? Are we going to hang on to that? Are we going to hang on to our bitterness? Are we going to hang on to our unforgiveness? Are we going to hang on? Because every little bit of this that we hang on to, that's just a building block in the dam that keeps the Spirit from flowing as freely 
as he wants. But can I tell you that when we say get out of here hatred, get out of here bitterness, get out of here malice, get out of here depression, I am somebody because God don't create junk. Amen. And I am a child of the Amen. living God. Thank you, Lord. Endued with power from on high. Thank you, Lord. And we can let the river flow through us. Let the river flow yes. through us. Amen. This morning, do you want the river to flow? Do you want the river to flow? Maybe there's some things that are there. And while I've been preaching this morning, the Holy Spirit's been reminding you, maybe it's pricked your heart, maybe it's said something. It's nobody else's business, but you know about it, the Lord knows about it. It's all that's important. Amen. But you say, Pastor, are there somebody said something to me back when and I've been holding the grudge need to let the river flow hear me let it go somebody hurt me somebody betrayed me somebody did something let it go yes. let the river flow yes. this has happened that's happened something else has happened let it go yes. let the river flow Yes, Pastor, I'm not worthy. Friend, none of us are. Amen. If we had to wait until we were worthy to be acceptable in God's sight, none of us would ever make it because none of us are worthy. Amen. But he says, come just as you are. Just as you are. <clears throat> and he'll wash away everything that's there and give you an abundance of life that you've never known before as his spirit because his rivers flow through you. This morning, if you're wanting the rivers to flow through you, meet me at the cross. Meet me at the cross. And the rivers are going to begin to flow. The rivers are going to begin to flow. Pastor, the Holy Spirit doesn't flow through me like he one time did. They the, the, the love of God doesn't flow through me like he one time did. I'm not as merciful as I one time was. My friend, I'm telling you, his cross is a place to be. Yes. To let the rivers flow. Yes, amen. Let the rivers flow. Holy Lord of heaven this morning. It's the work of the enemy. You tell us in your word. He's a thief. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But you said that you've come that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Lord, we want your rivers to flow this morning. We want your rivers to flow. To flow through us. To flow through with an abundance. flow through with authority. To flow through with fruitfulness. Let the rivers flow this morning. Let the rivers flow. If there's anything in your heart this morning, you may feel like you're holding the water back.
encourage you to let the river, the rivers, yes. flow through you. Hallelujah. Yes. Remind you of Wednesday night. You can be here for the Bible study Wednesday night. We've been having some good Bible studies on people of the Spirit. And that's who we are today. We are people of the Spirit that have a mission, have a purpose to change this world for Jesus Christ. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let's remember one another in prayer. Let's remember prayer time tomorrow night between 7 and 8. Please find some time to pray if you can. Let's stand and be dismissed this morning with a word of prayer.